Are you tired of the constant expenses that come with owning a car? Well, FlexCar has some exciting news for you. Say hello to the alternative to car ownership that saves you 10 to 20% every month compared to owning. Just one monthly payment that fits your budget and includes mileage, insurance, and routine maintenance. FlexCar offers you the flexibility to customize your plan to meet your individual needs. Whether you're a grad student at UNCC, a commuter working uptown, or someone who loves to explore Myers Park and Noda frequently, FlexCar has the right plan for you. And the best part, you can swap or change your plan anytime you want. It's a truly hassle-free experience that puts you in control. Sign up today at FlexCar.com and use code FLEX100 to get 100 free miles off your first ride with FlexCar. Own the road, not the car, with FlexCar. Imagine backyard barbecues and roasting marshmallows around your fire pit. A home is where you make memories that last a lifetime. Presenting Eastwood Homes, one of the Southeast's top builders of new homes for 45 years. Named 2023 Builder of the Year. And Eastwood Homes proudly donates a portion of every home sale in Charlotte to Levine Children's Hospital. Learn more at eastwoodhomes.com. That's eastwoodhomes.com. Eastwood Homes. Built with care. The need for foster parents locally in North Carolina and all over the country has been unmet for years. Thompson Child and Family Focus is transforming lives through early childhood, family stability, and mental health services. No matter the situation of a child, you can come to Thompson for the training you need to serve them. Discover how you can be a foster parent and make a difference in a child's life. Go to thompsoncff.org or call 704 536 7 Five. Hi listeners, welcome back. I'm Nedra Glover Tawab and you need to hear this. This week we'll be talking about how our workplaces can affect our mental health and how those relationships have such a significant impact on how we're able to work. Most of us work, you know, full time, which could be 40 hours, it could be 50 and oh my gosh, it could be even more. So the time we spend at work is really significant and it's important that we think about not just leaving work at work, but how work impacts us after we leave work. You know, sometimes we can be so drained from work that when we show up as friends, as when we show up in those family relationships, It is a reflection of what has pulled us during most of the day. So with work, sometimes we work with people who are difficult to get along with. Sometimes we work with people who are bullies. And sometimes we work with people who aren't doing their work. And when that happens, it can be really challenging. It might seem like a really nice thing for us to pick up the slack or, you know, maybe talk to everybody else about it and not talk directly to the person, but it really impacts our ability to just do our job and not have to focus on, you know, the energies of others or an increased workload. So in today's call, we will be talking to Um, someone who's having a challenge with a relationship at work. It's new. It's a long-term relationship. And they are challenged by, you know, having some boundary issues with this coworker. Before we hop into the letter, I want to say this about boundaries. With boundaries, we can have very healthy boundaries in some areas, but not all. That could look like having really healthy boundaries with our family members, but having not so great boundaries at work. It could look like having, you know, really flexible boundaries, you know, to the point of being porous in some relationships. So just because you're good with boundaries in one area, it does not mean that you are a boundaries king queen in all areas. So just make sure that you're looking at these different areas of your life. You're looking at, you know, your work relationships, you're looking at how you're using technology and all of the things. 
and pull some energy. You know, sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves. I hear people sometimes say I'm terrible at boundaries, but they're really looking over those areas where they do a great job with boundaries. So if you have, you know, maybe an area or two where you do a really good job with boundaries, pull some energy from those areas. You can do it. It's already in you. Pull some of that energy into these other spaces. So in this call, we'll be talking about work boundaries. So if you have really good boundaries with friends, pull some of that energy and increase or enhance those boundaries with work. Let's get into today's call. Hi, Nadra, it's Kelly from Las Vegas, and I'm having difficulty, I guess, with boundaries. I have a very large choir program. I'm a public school teacher, and I've had an assistant who's worked with me for the past 15 years who is um, someone who used to be quite helpful to me, but she has become less helpful as we have turned more towards technology. So everything is on the computer now and she is not technologically savvy. And I think she's a little timid around technology because she's elderly. And I mean, I don't wanna say, make a blanket statement about the elderly, but she's in her seventies and this is a little bit out of her wheelhouse. And when I've tried to teach her, she forgets a lot. And sometimes I feel like she doesn't want to learn, if that makes any sense. But but again, it could be because of her age. So it's gotten to the point where I do absolutely everything now that she used to do. The only thing that she really does for me now is hem dresses. And if the kids need to go to the restroom, she'll write a bathroom pass or a nurse's pass. But that's literally all I can have her do for me all day long. Now, I wouldn't mind it. I've been teaching long enough that I I can handle the work myself. I don't, I'm not as overwhelmed as I would have been maybe had I been younger, but she's also really been somebody that's ne- <laughs> never had a filter. She's never had a filter. But either as she's gotten older, the filter is even... Um, there's less filtration in that filter or I'm getting older and more sensitive or the combination of the two. The first thing I thought of when listening to this is what is the job description of a teacher assistant? When you talk about hemming dresses being her best skill, unless you all are preparing for a play, that is not a job skill. So for the past 15 years, what has this person been doing? It sounds like this has recently become a bigger problem, but what was she doing year one through 10? And I understand that technology is advancing and many things are now online, but are there other things that are perhaps being overlooked or have those things been eliminated? Also, I would wonder, why does the school system see the need to have her in this role if she's not fulfilling any duties? So this sounds like a situation that could be above you. I want to address the the issues around um, having a long-term problem with someone for 15 years. Um, you haven't spoke up about, you know, some of the personality differences, some of the comments that have been made. And once you sit with something for 15 years, yes, that 15th year on day seven, it's going to be so annoying. It's going to get on your nerves. So we can't go back in the past and do anything here, but anyone listening, If you have an issue with someone, speak up right away. Speak up soon after. Please speak up within the first year. We don't want problems to get to year 15 because this is what happens. We get to a point where we're so frustrated. We can't see anything that's going well in the relationship. We see no benefits because the issue has been going on for so long. And I hear this caller saying, maybe, you know, maybe it's me getting older. Maybe 
maybe it's me getting more sensitive. And what I'm thinking is, is you getting tired. It's been 15 years of the same behavior. So uh, perhaps it's not a combination of both. Perhaps it's you've let this go on for so long that you're now at a point of, oh my gosh, I can't take it anymore. So when that happens, we get resentful, we get really frustrated. And every single thing that this person does, even the way they say hello, even the way they sip their water, even the way they cross their legs, we may find it annoying because we've been dealing with all of these things for so many years. Now, those are not things that we would comment on, but certainly the way that they speak to the children in the classroom, the way that they handle new issues in the classroom. Those are things that should have been brought up many, many years ago. Now, at this point, because you're at work, there are certain job duties that people have to perform. What are those job duties? Are you clear about that? Is she clear about it? It doesn't sound like a personal issue as much as it sounds like a professional issue if someone is unable to fulfill their job. Now, the thing of age, we don't want to blame an unwillingness to learn on age because I've seen people as young as five years old not willing to learn something because they simply don't want to. As you get older, I do wonder this. Is it sometimes anxiety provoking to learn this new way of being, to learn this new system of stuff. It's very comfortable for many of us at any age to continue doing the things we've always done. And many of us are resistant to changes. If you talk to, you know, maybe your friends about an electric car, you're going to have some friends who say, I would never get one. That's too futuristic. I'll always have gas. You know, so sometimes it's it's just personality. It's the way we are. We don't want to do these new things. But when you're at work, you know, it goes back to that professional place. These things are a requirement. They're not necessarily things that you can do optionally. It's not a situation where, you know, hey, if you don't want to put the grades in on this system, you don't have to. These are things that need to be made clear as a part of the job. And, you know, as a teacher, I don't know if you're like her direct boss, but I wonder how do you bring in the person who is her boss? If you are the boss, then you're the person who talks to her. But how do you bring in other resources? Perhaps this is not all on you because there are certain things that this person needs to do outside of hemming dresses. You know, that's a great skill. I wish I worked with someone who hem dresses or sew buttons and this sort of thing. That's a really wonderful coworker to have, but they also need to fulfill their job duties. So I would certainly say that, you know, it's not just, oh my gosh, this person's personality, but also professionally, it sounds like this type of relationship is not working and this person is not able to fulfill their job it's above you. So I would say talk to, you know, your boss or get a clear job description and make sure that she knows and you know what that is, because I'm not even clear, you know, what the job description is based on, you know, what she's been doing over these 15 years. We'll be right back after this break. Protesters and supporters alike are lined up outside the United States Supreme Court this afternoon as a decision in the most hotly debated case in years is set to be delivered. From iHeart Podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case, Roe v. Wade. Sir, I graduated the top quarter of my class. We just just don't have a spot for you. Starring Maya Hawk as 26-year-old lead attorney Sarah Weddington for challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee William H. Macy as Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. My chief qualification being... 
I'm uncontroversial. You know how we both ended up on the Supreme Court? Politics? Damn right. This may be the longest of shots, but it's also the last chance for a lot of women. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. I'm trying to get you to stand for something, man. Now go to it. Listen to Supreme, the battle for Roe on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. But um, she has more time to sit and judge. I she'll often sit at her desk and cross stitch or sew for other people. The staff loves her because she will do she will sew anything for anyone and not charge them a dime. So everyone brings their hemming to my assistant. But <laughs> it gives her a lot of time to judge what's happening in my classroom and. She says very hurtful things that she does not mean to sound hurtful. I know she does not mean to hurt me. She doesn't realize, though, that when she criticizes how my kids are singing, it's a criticism of me. <laughs> I mean, but she's been doing this for years. I remember one concert. She, I, after a concert, she was talking to the parents about how bad the sound was. Again, that was a criticism of me. And you're talking about me to the parents, but I know you don't know that you're talking about me to the parents. <laughs> so it's one of those things where she really doesn't mean any harm, but she really hurts my feelings almost every day. How do we know when a person doesn't mean any harm? I often hear that say it when we want to believe the other person has good intentions for what they're saying. But I also think if they had good intentions, would they be saying a mean thing? You know, we don't know when someone doesn't mean to hurt us. It's our assumption. And it can be really hard to consider that Maybe sometimes people are trying to be mean. Maybe they are trying to hurt us. Perhaps there's reasons for that, right? Like we can create a whole assumption list or a narrative around why they would do that and how that's not their fault. But, you know, maybe their intention is to not be nice. Maybe their intention is to say something mean. So we can't necessarily assume that this person has no clue what they're doing. Again, I'm hearing a lack of very defined job duties. I'm hearing cross stitching and sewing at your desk as job duties, or you know, maybe like what you do in your pastime, and that's really good if there's some downtime. But again, what are you supposed to be doing with this time? What has been asked of this assistant? Are they clear that, you know, in this moment, here's what you're supposed to be doing? Now, with the staff loving her, it sounds like you feel some guilt around having these issues. Also, I wonder, why isn't anybody else aware of this issue? Why is it like this secret issue that you've been holding on to for 15 years? Why haven't you said anything? I understand, you know, at some point, maybe you benefited from having your clothes hemmed and all of these wonderful things. But again, she's not a seamstress, at least not at the school. Her job is to be an assistant in the classroom. What are those duties? Has she been tasked with really fulfilling the duties of an assistant? Because even, even if she's not saying anything, she's cringing or making a face or just judging. And I can't take it anymore, but I don't know what to do. It's become so upsetting to me that I don't say anything. Like I, I won't say it, it. I used to be able to say, well, that was so great. I'm so proud of him. And she would point out something negative a lot, <laughs> but now I won't say anything because I can't handle it. I can't, I, I've been trying for the last couple of years to focus on the positive because teaching post COVID has been very difficult. I think mean, any teacher across the world would say teaching has been extremely difficult since coming back from COVID. The kids are behind. We have a lot of catching up to do. And I need to focus on the wins, not on the things that are going wrong. And but so having someone there who's not on that same 
team with me is hard. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't need, okay, this is where it sounds bad. I don't need her anymore. I don't need her to be working with me. And I guess if she was not so free with her opinions, I would be able to have her sit there and sew. I wouldn't care. She doesn't cause any harm. But if you're, it's hurtful to me. And I'm trying to stay positive, and it's hard to when I've got someone there saying negative things, and I can't help but to then dwell on it even though I know she's not qualified to say it she doesn't have a teaching degree she doesn't have a music degree she doesn't even sing but I still take it to heart I don't know how not to I hear a few things here it sounds like you're trying to convince yourself that she's not causing any harm but then I hear you saying but it's hurtful to me I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I don't need her to be with me. So she is causing harm. If you could just sit with that for a minute, that working with this person makes your job very difficult, period. That can be really hard to accept. And I hear you like teetering on acceptance, but then backing away that she's not doing anything wrong. It's just, you know, I'm trying to stay positive. Trying to stay positive in a negative environment is a lot of work of pretending. Is it even possible to be positive in an environment where someone is making it uncomfortable, where someone is saying things that really get in the way of you doing your work? I don't think so. And again, you know, I I think this is something that has been happening. It's been brewing, perhaps because of the history that is there. It's, It's feeling like it's getting worse, but it's probably the same. And there was some part of you for many years who, you know, made excuses for it, who had more empathy towards it. And it sounds like you're running out of that empathetic muscle. Like you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm tired. It's been too much. And you have that right. But I also want you to acknowledge that this is hurting you. Please stop pretending to be unbothered. Please stop pretending that it's not really a big deal because this whole call is about how big of a deal it is. You want to teach kids. You want to be able to show up as you know the light in the classroom and it sounds like this person is really getting in the way of that if she's not saying things she's making facial expressions if she's not making facial expressions she's making noises and all of these things that really impact your ability to do your job so as you're saying I don't know what to do I think the thing that you do is speak to your higher ups about what you're experiencing with her. And it's not, you know, tattletelling. It is saying that, you know, someone needs to come in and monitor this. You, do you have anyone at your school who sort of monitors teachers in their classroom and, and who's responsible for, you know, providing some sort of feedback about, you know, her participation in the class or her ability to do her job. I would say just, you know, hey, we're having some issues in the classroom. Can we have someone come observe us? If they notice that most of the day she's, you know, cross stitching and hemming, I I don't know if that person would let that go. So that's something that you can do. You can also say something when these things are happening and not just let it go. And I know it sounds maybe a little petty to kind of point out, oh my gosh, did you just say, you know, just, just say, you know, what the person said to you. You don't have to put your own words together. You could just say, did you say that Kia was singing too loud? And if they say, yeah, I said that, how do you think that made them feel? Or, oh, that wasn't, you know, maybe they feel a way about that. You know, these are kids and we want to be gentle around how we speak about them singing or, you know, maybe missing a note or not doing something to the best of their ability. You know, 
speaking to her about what you're observing could be really helpful. But all in all, this sounds like this person isn't doing a job of a teacher's assistant and the choir classroom. So I would wonder, you know, why you're trying to protect her. Because I hear a lot of protection in what you're saying about, you know, she doesn't mean it. She's not a bad person. You're trying to stay positive. But for 15 years, it sounds like you've had some issue with this person not doing their job properly. So when do you start to speak up? When do you think that, you know, people will discover that this problem is happening? I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know if there will be an instance where you wake up tomorrow and other people have said, oh my gosh, she's in your classroom sewing. They love it. You know, if I worked with you, I would love it. I'm actually looking at this letter and thinking, oh my gosh, I really need to, you know, dig into some of my coworkers and see if they can help me with some hemming needs that I have. I I think people would like that. They do have this need for connection. It sounds like she is nice in some ways, but that has nothing to do with a job. And so if you think about what the job is, is she doing her job? That is the question we're answering. Is she doing her job? This is not an age issue. This is an issue for all ages. Is the person doing their job? We'll continue after this break. So... How do I either let the thing she says slide off my back or how do I talk to my administration and let them know I don't need an assistant anymore because I will look like a terrible person because no one knows that this is happening. They only know that she's that woman that will sew anything for everyone (laughs) for free. Thank you, Nandra. Bye-bye. I will look like a terrible person. Hmm. I wonder if her skills could be better used in a different classroom setting. I wonder what she is saying about you to other people. Maybe this is just a connection mismatch. It may not mean that she needs to leave the school, but talking to administration could be, you know, a path for putting her in a classroom that is a better fit for her. So sometimes when we are speaking to higher ups about our coworkers or even when we're in a position to have to, you know, maybe fire someone, it's not a disservice to them as much as it can be an enhancement for them to find a thing that actually works for them or for them to get better in their position. Doing nothing will keep you in this situation. And I understand you don't want to be perceived as a terrible person, but who knows if you will. I don't know if you will be perceived as a terrible person when, you know, some folks have mentioned to me that their coworker is doing something. I don't think, oh my gosh, you're such a terrible person for telling me that this person isn't helping you with this project. It's actually helpful because we want you to be helped with the project. We want you to have more help in the classroom. So if you're not receiving what you need, that's not a good thing for you either. So as you're thinking about how this reflects on her, I want you to think about how this is impacting you every single day. The protection you're trying to offer her is the protection that you need as well. You need your peace protected. You need your kids to feel like they are seen, that you know you are being positive. You have needs as well. It's not just about the other person. And I understand that she is well liked by other people. She is a wonderful seamstress. All of those things are great and it's also not her job and it really has nothing to do with your classroom setting. How do you talk to administration? Perhaps you're not going to them to say, I don't need an assistant anymore. Maybe you're going to them to say, what are the things that this person can help me with in my classroom? Or maybe you're going to say, hey, can we get an observation to just make sure we're both doing our jobs well in the classroom? Or maybe you're saying, 
here are some things I'm needing in the classroom that I'm not getting any help with. Can someone talk to her? Maybe it's not, you know, completely getting rid of the situation or maybe it is, but you have options. And I think you should pick whichever thing you feel most comfortable doing. You are not a terrible person. We've all worked with someone who, you know, may have had some issues or challenges with the the way they do their work. And it's, it's really important that you acknowledge that it's not your job to protect people when they're not doing their job. You need to hear this. When we are being harmed by people, so often we give them a pass. We say, oh, they didn't mean to do it. That wasn't their intention. And we do not know. Maybe they are having some issues that's causing them to be mean toward us, but they're still being mean toward us. And we don't have to gloss over how a person is presenting with us. We don't have to make excuses for poor behavior because it will hurt their feelings. When we are being mistreated, it is not healthy for us to collude with the person who is mistreating us and to make excuses for them. We really have to examine our feelings and be honest about how people are treating us in these relationships. Without that, we'll stay in the excuse cycle. We'll stay in the enabling cycle. We will stay in the pattern of being mistreated because we feel like they're not doing it on purpose. We feel like, you know, maybe it's an accident. They don't even know what they're saying. But if they said it once and then they said it twice, they're clear about what they're saying. If they did it once and they did it twice, it's not unintentional. Sometimes people are mean. Sometimes people are hurting you. And you know what really helps? Telling them. Letting them know that that's not okay. Please don't say that to me. Oh, the other day when you said this, I just thought, oh, does she know how how that may have come off when she said something like that? Speaking up is what changing the pattern. Pretending, making excuses, allowing people to do it, you will stay stuck. If you want to get out of the cycle of people saying and doing mean things. You will have to free yourself. You will have to have those uncomfortable conversations and address what's being said and done. You Need to Hear This is an iHeart production hosted by me, Nedra Glover Tawab. Our executive producer is Joelle Monique. Our senior producer and editor is Mia Dawn Taylor. Send us a voice memo with your questions about boundaries and relationships at you need to hear this at iHeartMedia.com. Please be sure to rate our show wherever you listen to it and share this episode with someone who needs to hear this. Talk to you next time. From iHeart Podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case, Roe v. Wade. Starring Maya Hawk as 26-year-old lead attorney, Sarah Weddington. We're challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee, William H. Macy, as Supreme Court Justice, Harry Blackman. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. Listen to the podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, it's Angie Martinez. Check out my podcast, Angie Martinez IRL, where we have beautiful conversations with all types of people. From Kelly Rowland to Mike Tyson to Kim Kardashian to JT from the City Girls. These are conversations about real life. We talk about love and death and our mental health and how we navigate all the ups and downs of life. And I promise every episode, there'll be a takeaway for you to use in your own real life. Check out Edge Martinez IRL on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to The Good Stuff. I'm Jacob Schick, a third-generation combat Marine. And I'm his co-host and wife, Ashley Schick. We believe everyone has a story to tell, not only about the peaks, but the valleys they've been through to get them to where they are today. 
We're joined by some amazing guests who share the lessons they've learned that shaped who they are and what they're doing to pay it forward and give back. Listen to the good stuff on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.